President Biden may claim he didn't coin the term Bidenomics, but he sure has been leaning into it lately. And all the talk about I'm a big spending Biden, I lowered the deficit. <laughs> One trillion seven hundred billion dollars in the first two years. No one's ever done that. The last guy increased it by 40. Anyway, I won't finish. <laughs> well, that's Bidenomics in action. <laughs> And whether he's creepily whispering or ineffectively shouting about the strength of economic policies, Americans don't appear to be buying his assurances. According to a new Routers Ipsos poll, the economy remains the top concern for Americans. A new report in Fortune says many are cutting back on personal hygiene products like scouring shelves for cheaper toothpaste and what they say is a troubling sign for the economy. Kevin, thank goodness we have a resident expert on the couch today. What do you make of this? Uh, it's true. The problem with uh, the, the policy so far and the multiple bills, including the CHIPS Act and, of course, the Anti-Inflation Act, whatever you want to call it, is just massive spending, but it's the target of where that spending went. Here's the problem. Most of it's going to the S&P 500 companies. They're important. They're big employers in America. However, they only represent 40% of the economy. Mm -hmm. What we haven't seen is the unintended consequence that's now we're seeing is that we're starving small business in America. We throw billions to Intel and nothing to a guy in Champaign-Urbana who's running a, a shop with 58 employees. His cost of capital, because of these rapid rate hikes, has gone through the moon. It went from maybe 6 or 7 percent, now to 20 percent. He can't, he can't raise any capital because the regional banks have stopped lending to him as they wait to see what the new liquidity rules are. This is why I was on the Hill yesterday. I was banging the drum up and down the hall saying, Everybody, let's wake up to what's happening to my small companies. I got 34 plus companies. They can't raise a dime. They're, there's no mm -hmm. Bidenomics for them. They have no capital. And that's a big problem and it's manifesting itself. Those are the people that are looking for cheaper toothpaste and all the issues that are going around inflation. Core inflation is not down. CPI, yes, but core inflation, the real inflation that hurts a small individual that's trying to live off 58,000, they're getting killed. And this will show up in the polls. This will become political. But we've got to save small business right now. We have to do everything in our power to make sure they get access to capital. This is a problem that's only six to eight weeks old. You talk to anybody running a small business between five and 500 employees, they cannot raise any money. That's bad economic policy. And that's because Biden's focused only on the big guys. Well, we have a family small business, and not be. only have we been choking for so many years under this administration because of the COVID policies and the regulations, but to your point now, we can't get any capital, and the capital means nothing anyway because the dollar is, is so much less of a value. Carly, on Friends this morning, you were covering extensively the fact that shoppers, when they go to the grocery store, they are facing double-digit increases on those basics that Americans all need every day, flour. Yeah bread, sugar, things that we cook and provide for our families with, and yet our whispering, gleefully chuckling president seems to ignore it. And that's why campaigning on Bidenomics is such a risk, because not only are you telling people, don't believe what I'm feeling, believe what I'm telling you, it's also a risk because if we do go into a recession, it has a name, and it's Bidenomics. And Janet Yellen just said a few days ago that a recession isn't entirely off the table. Uh, but the White House is all in on this Bidenomics push. I just saw that they posted something on Instagram, and they're telling people to text them. They provide a number about how Bidenomics has affected them, and they, they showed a text that they say they received from a guy named Pat. He says, my neighbor just returned uh, to Minnesota from Pennsylvania by car and said they saw nothing but bridges being built everywhere. Thank you, Mr. President. The <laughs> comment section was not kind. I saw one person who said, I'll take a conversation that never happened for 200. <laughs> I think the likelihood, Kaylee, of someone texting, writing out Minnesota and Pennsylvania is a, about a, a million to one, I'd say. Yeah. And when, yeah. when uh, Carly points out Yellen's performance, and what she says, I mean, was this before or after she was bowing to the Chinese? Oof. I mean, the, the optics have been absolutely ridiculous this whole time, but that pales in comparison to the real hurt that American people are facing right now and feeling. Yeah, I was reading a variety of estimates that the average American since Biden took over um, has been cost anywhere from 5,000 is the lowest estimate I've seen to 34,000 in inflation. That's real money. Think about it, you wow. lost anywhere from five to $34,000. It's extraordinary. Um, there was the bank rate survey last week that said 78% do not feel financially secure, but note of caution, the economy stupid has always been the, you know, 
the, the phrasing of modern political era, not anymore. The midterms, it was not the economy, stupid. The economy is, if it was the economy, Republicans would have prevailed in a huge red wave. They did not. Hmm. Um, I want to yield my time back to you because small businesses, as of even last year, were still hiring 60 to 70 percent of the workforce in America. And it, so it is troubling to think that post-pandemic, we are still, they are still suffering and we're part of that suffering via our president. It turned on the Silicon Valley Bank. It was the moment when I saw the change occur. You mean when he paid for rich people yeah, not but, to fail. But what the, the, what the shockwave went through that people haven't seen the end of is Every bank now, the 4,600 that mm -hmm. remain, where most small businesses bank and do payroll on Wednesday night, have been told, hold up on loans because we have to see the effects of real estate going through your portfolio. Wow. We've got a problem here, Houston. It's coming to a theater near you. Mm -hmm. Kevin, we're so glad that you are here today. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumber. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa. President Biden may claim he didn't coin the term Bidenomics, but he sure has been leaning into it lately. And all the talk about I'm big spending Biden, I lowered the deficit. <laughs> One trillion seven hundred billion dollars in the first two years. No one's ever done that. The last guy increased it by 40. Anyway, I won't finish. <laughs> well. That's Bidenomics in action. <laughs> and whether he's creepily whispering or ineffectively shouting about the strength of economic policies, Americans don't appear to be buying his assurances. According to a new Routers Ipsos poll, the economy remains the top concern for Americans. A new report in Fortune says many are cutting back on personal hygiene products like scouring shelves for cheaper toothpaste and what they say is a troubling sign for the economy. Kevin, thank goodness we have a resident expert on the couch today. What do you make of this? Uh, it's true. The problem with uh, the policy so far and the multiple bills, including the CHIPS Act and, of course, the Anti-Inflation Act, whatever you want to call it, is just massive spending, but it's the target of where that spending went. Here's the problem. Most of it's going to the S&P 500 companies. They're important. They're big employers in America. However, they only represent 40% of the economy. Mm -hmm. What we haven't seen is the unintended consequence that's now we're seeing is that we're starving small business in America. We throw billions to Intel, 